the whole team. So, Eddie, Lee, Matt, yeah, to be back with the videos. Thank you. So we are starting the session. So welcome to the Tech Talk with a Partner series by Approval Max. And today we will be talking about the best practices for implementing spend control for property management, specifically for apartment developments with specific focus on operational systems that are required to do that most efficiently. Let me start with the introductions. My name is Maria Kozlova and I did marketing at Approval Max. And I will be your host today, very happy to be. Uh, so as an application, as a cloud application, Approval Max provides approval workflow automation for cloud accounting platforms such as Xero, QuickBooks Online. And uh, uh, we also have a partner, Fathom. Hi, Matt, please uh, uh, let me hand it over to you for a quick introduction. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Mia. Thank you all for uh, joining in, in CloudFox for, uh, I guess, having me as well. Um, my name is Matt. I'm Head of Operations uh, at Fathom. Uh, for those who don't know, Fathom's a management reporting, business analytics and forecasting app. So uh, we interrupt with Zero, and you'll see later on in the demonstration from the experts at CloudFox um, how easy it is to tie it all together. And once all of that hard work is done and automated with Approval Max and Zero and HubDoc, yeah, and come into Fathom and we can consolidate, benchmark, track financial, non-financial KPIs and forecast specific events through modeling and unlimited scenarios. So there's quite a lot uh, to unpack there at the, uh, at the end with, with Fathom. Thank you. Thank you very much. And on the delivery side, we have CloudFox. Hello, Eddie. Hello, Lee. Uh, yeah. Uh, so same way. So how are you doing today? And please do the introductions. Yeah, very good. Uh, thanks very much for, for hosting this session, Maria. Uh, so my name is Lee, Lee Shaw, and I'm a co-founder at CloudFox. Uh, we've been working in the uh, uh, this particular sector for nearly 10 years, and we've been providing financial and operational systems expertise to, to, to various clients. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, if you could also please try and uh, switch the video on, it would be great. We'd be happy to see you. Okay, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> there he is, my yeah. handsome fella. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I'm Eddie Lee, I'm director um, and care for most of the BTR and PBSA uh, um, companies that we work for. So I tend to do the booking journey side of things and Lee then handles the accounting side of the, uh, of the operations. So we, as a service operator, go into these businesses and help them build their platforms. That's bookings to balance sheet. So your customer journey, do your property management software, through to your accounting software, payment gateways, and then your operational and reporting software with Approval Max and Adam. Mm -hmm. Yep, thank you very much. And before we start some, some housekeeping, so this session is apparently being recorded and we will be very happy to share the recording shortly with you. And also we would like to make this session as interactive as possible. So we very much encourage you to ask questions as we speak. To do that, please use the Q&A button at the bottom menu. And also uh, we will be running several polls just to see, um, just to be yeah, keeping in touch with you. So um, uh, let's then start. And um, so for this start, let's, uh, Let's talk about the state of the market. So for apartment developments, what has been happening? So apparently the question, the first one that's on everybody's minds is uh, how hard the market has been hit by the pandemic. That's the first one. And secondly, uh, so digital transformation uh, to trend trends, so how they're shaping up the market. So Eddie, let me invite you to uh, talk about that. Sure, thanks Maria. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, everyone um, who's on the call, I'm sure, is fully aware of the, the difficulty that the pandemic has, has um, brought up upon everybody. And if you split it up into two different sections, so the income side of things, and then obviously on the development side of things. So if you're an operator, operator and you're um, dealing with your full buildings, then all of a sudden you have some vacancies going. Um, that's going to be a real challenge for you to manage, a real challenge for both the customer perspective of, you know, do you offer discounts? Uh, and there's an article today just um, in The Guardian about the UK universities um, saying, I'll read this in one second, wasted one billion in a year on empty accommodation. So that's really a, a big struggle. Uh, and you've got a, a patchy kind of setup here of where PBSA and B built to rent providers aren't um, maybe not offering the full discounts um, that they 
tenants kind of uh, would, would like to see. Um, so that's going to be a real challenge at the moment. So obviously with then the reduction in income, then you've got your costs. Now the developers are still having to try and develop these properties and then to market them. So that again is a real challenge, especially in some countries, um, Ireland, uh, see some, um, some people from Ireland on, on, the, on the call and, and in Scotland where they shut down the development uh, sites. So that's a real, real challenge for them. They've pushed out the delivery, which then has a massive impact on then the investment side of things. You know, can you actually achieve that uh, return on investment uh, due to that pandemic? So I think we've seen within the technology side of this that there's been a lot more sort of push towards how can we automate and streamline both our refunds and our communication um, strategies with, with, with customers. Um, that takes on not just an operational, but a marketing point of view as well. Um, you know, so you, what, how do you get that message out? Are you, are you communicating with your customers in a timely manner and giving them some understanding of where you are and, and where the, your brand is? Um, because that can have a real detrimental effect if you're not quite quick on the, on the, on the trigger um, for when they try to rebook or return or, or try and um, keep that accommodation booked in for later on. Um, yeah, and the, and the technology is moving fast. The technology um, that uh, obviously we've got all these software developers that sat at home now working from home like us all. Um, and they're re really re um, releasing a lot of these new features out that we, and we're going to show some of them later on that help businesses streamline their operational platforms, which then in turn helps them working from home for their staff as well as the, um, as well as the cost reduction by not having to employ more people to shuffle paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes great sense. Um, thank you very much. So we have several polls. I'm I'm now starting to think maybe we do that on our next slide when we talk about the actual tendencies and um, so challenges and objectives here. So yeah, I, I, I propose we do that uh, here. So uh, just to continue on the same topic, uh, now that we have seen the, the tendencies and yeah, the situation is very, very, very disruptive for many businesses and, and for this market specifically. So, um, and you started already talking about it. So this, this, this absolute demand to minimize the total cost of ownership of the application stack, this absolute demand to uh, minimize time to roll out uh, the span control app stack and the, the, the software, the operational, the operational systems that would ensure that there is span control in place. So uh, yeah, back over to you, Eddie. Uh, yeah, let's talk about yeah. that. Well, yeah, I mean, it, there's two different um, camps, I guess. You've got a lot of the private developers and a lot of the operators are trying to keep their costs down to a minimum. So they typically, on, on I like to call them greenfield sites, where they're actually just starting up their brand, starting up their platform, they won't have the staff in place to actually have all these operational processes uh, defined and written out. So you want to be able to provide that service for them and then implement a, a, a a piece of software or a process that will actually take care of some of that headcount process for them. So for instance, for a client of ours, Moda, when we were setting up their systems for them, you had um, you know, the asset managers, you had the um, head of operations, you had a, the head of um, facilities, but then you didn't actually have anybody else to, to, to operate with. So we had to kind of try and keep it streamlined, but then have the capacity for them to be expanding over and over again when more and more people came on as it came closer to their project completion. So it was really key for them to try and keep that, um, the software capabilities, um, keep it standard to start off with and then build upon it um, without having to have that upfront cost. And that's what this stack does. This stack, stack is, um, you know, if I do say it so myself, fantastic in terms of uh, cost benefit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Yeah, we will be talking about the application stack further on also. And the good news is that uh, some part of the presentation today will be the actual uh, product demo. So uh, yeah, stay tuned. I propose we do our first poll here about the budget. And I guess, Eddie, you would be the best one to introduce that. Yeah. Yeah, so um, obviously we're talking about spend control and, and why is spend control important? So when we have conversations with uh, with teams when they're setting up their platform, what is the standard operating budget for a property manager? So this is the numbers that we hear coming backwards and forwards all the time, but it'd be good to have your insights and the people who are, who are watching to see if what we hear on the street is actually the same in your experience. So we're getting some answers coming in. Um, so that's, that's good to see. Now there's, we are looking at some build to rent private providers as well as purpose built student accommodation providers. There could be some universities in there as well that have um, accommodation or graduate accommodation services. So there, there's going to be a variance 
um, in in that uh, gross to net budget. Yeah. And I'm sure once the results come in, some people will be more envious than others um, on the budget that they have. So what do you make of the, of the answers? So coming in now, and the majority um, I can see are in the 20 to 25% um, gross to net. So if you've got a, say a, a million pounds worth of revenue, you're looking at managing your spend about 250,000 pounds. There's some with a 50% budget for that gross to net and uh, we'd like to find out who you are. Um, after the, after this call, and we'll, we'll speak to you. Um, but yeah, and and a, and a couple with just ten percent. So I think the majority are trying to run their operations at twenty to twenty five percent. So as I say, in a million pound revenue uh, in your building, which is really um, uh, you know, say hundred apartments, a hundred mm -hmm. apartments at sort of eight hundred and fifty a month, um, thousand a month is is round about that area. So we're not talking a massive portfolio for quite a substantial spend. Um, so yeah, that, that, that is how um, we come at all of our projects, which we understand that your uh, operational expenses is round about 20, 25%, the lower the better, and that's how you make your, uh, your profit. And that's also how you make the asset value increase. And you know, something like every pound uh, of cost reduces something like 12 pounds on the valuation. Um, so it's really important for you to get spend control. Uh, both in terms of the income and when you're given out refunds, especially within the pandemic, as well as the costs that are being uh, uh, spent both by your site team and your head office team and marketing. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, uh, sounds about right. So I guess we're done with the with the uh, um, yeah with the uh, with the first poll. Yep. 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 Uh, so uh, closing that for myself, I I I, I think it will just uh, close automatically. Uh, for everyone. So uh, we also have an outline of the real estate asset life cycle. And um, so from discovery to disposal. So this is kind of a comprehensive view. So with some details around spec control objectives at every stage. So Eddie, yeah, it's just, uh, I guess it's back over to you. So if you could uh, just very briefly talk about spend control uh, priorities at each stage and where you see the key focus. Um, so sure, yeah, I mean, it, it, obviously, everyone on the on on the participants will will see these um, sort of five stages and understand them um, from their own perspectives. But as I say, from our from our perspective, from CloudFox, we get involved a lot of the times with the developments and operations side of uh, side of the of the coin, um, and when we are then in the operations phase and you come to disposal, that's when we see the, the, the churn um, and the cost savings that we can do in the operations really take a, a, a massive, make a massive, massive impact. Um, the, the discovery and acquisitions, I'd say, you know, that in spend control, because they are head uh, uh, main contractors or they might be large invoices, the volume isn't there, but it's a large spend. Um, and these are, tend to be tightly controlled under the, the, the top co or the, or the asset owner. The development side and the operations, again, the development side has a lot of construction costs in it, um, has a lot of head contractors. So there will be some volume coming through, but it has a slightly different flavor because you've got to tend to have a more centralized team looking after that. The real weight of this, uh, the, the, the accounting and the tools that we have here are really targeted on the operational side. You know, you might have five or six staff members on site, uh, you have some head office staff, and then they need to cooperate uh, and, and communicate with each other um, with that expense. And that's where the high volume comes through. And when you then start to get your operational team have more than one building to look after, then you're getting this multi-ownership aspect. So you need to be able to control costs and compare costs across those different buildings so you can see your benchmarking. Um, and that's where the high volume it is and the, and the saving. And as I mentioned earlier on, if you save a pound in cost, you can get 12 pounds worth of income. I think it's 12 pound roughly then the last Goldman Sachs thing I saw. Um, so it really does make a massive difference when you're disposing your assets, if you can keep your costs controlled. Thank you. Um, I, I guess it would be a logical thing just to switch to the application stack, to the function on technology stack. So uh, again, to continue uh, on, on, on this one. So in terms of functional capabilities and essential building blocks for the technology, for the operation technology stack. Apparently there is a, there's a need to have a system of records. So cloud-based accounting platform 
And uh, so we'll be looking at that later. So also there is a need for process automation and data automation and the other applications will be covering that. Also on top of that, there's uh, every time in every case, there is a need for reporting, budgeting and forecasting. And um, again, so uh, zero print integrated application here to be uh, talked about. So, um, uh, so uh, Eddie, back over to you. If you if you could please speak about the operational stack, span control stack that you're using in your in your in your practice. Yep, sure. Um, it'd be it'd be interesting to know from any of the attendees if um, if any of you are using Zero at the moment, and, and you know, are you familiar with it, with the tools uh, that are available? So just stick in a yes or yes or no in the in the chat. Um, Zero is the hub. For all our, all the systems we that we have designed with all our PBSA and BTR operators, and there's a couple of reasons for that. You know, one of them is it's, it's a great piece of accounting software. It's very straightforward and simple. You know, there's two million users worldwide. Um, the other aspect is it's got 800 or so apps that you can bolt on. So that means that you can build on your expenses or build on your contracting or build on some other aspect that you're going to concentrate on without having to change your accounting application or without having to change the whole ERP system. I mean, there's certainly ERP systems out there that are there, the, they, they do everything for you if you buy the licensed module, but then you're, you're kind of stuck into them. And that's where this zero hub and spoke kind of system that we like to talk about um, really plays it's a great part. You have a zero development team, you have approval max development team and fathom teams that are working purely on that specific niche, uh, specific functionality, and they're really concentrating on it and always developing it. I mean, I don't know how many people um, on the panelists have been working with Yardi or, or, or similar, and you, you want a feature, but the development team have got on their backlog of work to do, and it's just not really being prioritized. Well, with these kind of systems, you know, the Approval Max teams are releasing um, information all the time and, facility, and functionalities all the time. So you can actually get that functionality coming to you um, without having to actually pester them, uh, which is which is always nice, and that's where CloudFox come in because there's so many releases coming out um, from all the software vendors. How does it actually impact your business, and how do you get to use those those features? And that's where we look through them and say, okay, how do our operators want to use this? What are the problems and the pain points and the pinch points that they have at the moment, and does that suit them? And can we then roll that out for them? Um, and and that's worked so uh, well so far for a lot of the BTR and um, uh, PBSA operators that we support at the moment. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. That makes great sense. So before we uh, move on to talk about each application in detail, so I propose we anyway do a quick poll. So the second one, uh, and uh, and we invite everyone to mention uh, what applications they're using. So it's a multiple choice one. So if you're using Zero, if you're using HubDoc, Approval Max, and uh, Adam. We have some responses already in the chat box, but anyway, so the yeah, it's great. The poll. That will also uh, make sure that we're not spending too much time on applications that are already well known. So yeah, uh, yeah, so hmm. it's, it's a, a, a broad mixture of everyone using the software um, at the moment. Yep, I propose we have like ten seconds more and then just uh, move on to talk about. Yeah, each application. Yeah, so I'm, I'm sure, I mean, that every software has its own um, foibles, but uh, I think zero in terms of bang for buck is, you know, is incredibly, incredibly good. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay, uh, so let me just switch on to, uh, to, to the zero slide. Yeah, and I'll be switching off the, yep, yeah, switching off the ball. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Eddie, back over to you. Yeah, as I mentioned, um, Zero is um, super quick to get set up, integrates with a load of different apps, and also has an open API, so you can actually connect it to your own bespoke system that you have. Um, there is, as I say, about 2 million subscribers worldwide, so in terms of the resources that you need, if you needed to have somebody who's a Zero bookkeeper or a Zero accountant, then there's, there's plenty of options there. Um, I think it's been developed at quite a good pace. They do quarterly updates and they have a great zero university there for you to get your information if you want to do everything internally. Um, great piece of software, can't recommend it enough. Great. Uh, so, <coughs> Hubdog, so not everyone is uh, very well familiar with this one. So yeah, I propose we spend some time on this one. 
Yeah, so we've configured HubDoc. So we have a lot of customers that have multi-building multi, um, sites. Does that make sense? No, they have multi-sites building on each site. And we use HubDoc so that they can individual suppliers can send them their invoices into HubDoc. And Lee will show this later on in the, in the demonstration. Um, and each HubDoc is belongs to, to Zero, And obviously, we've got quite a few of them using HubDoc, um, less than the ones that are using Zero. So I, I would definitely encourage you to, um, to set up your HubDoc to get that automation into your zero system and um, so you can get your suppliers sending it straight to hubdoc and then be straight into zero without you having to key in anything after the first attempt um, it's also got some um, great features in terms of the um in terms of notifications and, and also pulling down statements so your um, mobile phone statements electricity and this functionality really reduces the amount of time that you have to spend doing data processing Yeah, switching on then to to approval max one yeah dare i say anything about that or is, is that um, uh, please go ahead yeah yeah um so approval max yeah uh, again we've got sort of half the half of the respondents uh, are using approval max so you'll know exactly um how it operates the mobile app um is per you uh, it's per company as well so a great feature of approval max when you're using your workflows and setting up your automation of your processes are that you set it up for your company that's connected to, to zero, especially in this instance. And then you can have 10 users, 20 users, 30 users, and it doesn't cost you any more. And you can have those workflows set up so they're dynamic, um, so that you know somebody on reception can only order something from one supplier, and but then the general manager can order something from everyone. Um, it's you know, it, it makes the, the whole process a lot more straightforward and then it's also defined for you as well so you can define it beforehand and then work that flow through um, and one thing that we're not going to show um, due to time constraints is actually the um, the process of doing refunds so Lee's going to show you um, coming up uh, the process of spend control and it's the exact same sort of workflow for doing your refunds as well so if you wanted to have somebody refunded for for their stay or for their deposit being refunded you could push this through approval approval max uh, as part of that refund process and it's all be managed and it's all audited mm -hmm. thank you very much and now fathom yes well fathom everybody loves pretty graphs um i think i was just commented on somebody on linkedin at, um this morning who had a marketing spreadsheet and i, I, I don't know maybe it's because i'm a former accountant but um the, the graphs and reports, the information um, that comes through from Fathom and the financial control that it shows you um, really do help you pinpoint out the outliers in some, in some of your sites um, for your benchmarking, uh, as well as the pre-wrapped reports and analytics that it gives you um, for self-selection. You know, so gone are the days when you're using Fathom now that you have to pester the accounts team to send out a report so you can get some, some figures from them um, to find out what your operational costs are. You, the managers or the whoever has access to it again can go in see those figures and then action uh, make some actions from it so um fantastic tool thank you anything else uh matt anything you would like to add i think eddie did a, did a great job there i think i'll be out of a job after that one um no yeah just just as as you said as i mentioned uh, at the start i think it's um Obviously, the visuals are a strong suit, um, but it's very much uh, you need to get the data right going into it. I'm a big advocate for that. And that's where obviously all this HubDoc Approval Max um, automation comes into it. That's really key. And then on the back end, we can kind of model out, you know, can you afford another building? What's the return on that, et cetera, et cetera. So um, it's important to get the, the first bit right and then kind of move on to the forward looking stuff that Baldwin can uh, provide. Thank you. Uh, so benefits of the span control app stack, I, I think we pretty much in some way covered that. And the key one is the cost efficiency and you're paying for uh, the functionality that you're actually using. So flexibility, so very intuitive applications. So you can um, uh, know very little time needs to be spent on training and onboarding business users. And that that's, that's, that's also key. So ability to work from uh, on the on, on the go so from any device also essential and um so eddie anything that you want to specifically point out or do you want us to move on to the demo part so the only um, there's more information at the end of the um of the webinar as well as a special offer for those people uh, still awake um but the barrier to entry for this is you know these all these this stack is um 30 days notice so you can try have a have a go with the software, see if it works, 
see what the, the, the benefits is going to add to you. And if, you, if it's not really for you, then you just stop the subscription, uh, which is just a, a great offer. It's not one of these long-term contracts, 12, 24 months, that's not going to take you three weeks to implement. Um, you can try it, see if it works, and then iterate after that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, now the most interesting part, the demo part. So, uh, Lee, let me hand it over to you. So, for a very, uh, so first, just to talk about the storyboard, right? So, and then uh, fully handing over to you. Yeah, okay. Well, thanks very much, everyone, for your contributions. So, what we have coming up is a, is a quick demo of some uh, raising some purchase orders, doing some matching to invoices. Uh, creating the accrual, looking at the reporting, and we just wanted to give this a real-world flavour. So we've gone with a, you know, a typical student housing uh, block with 300 beds, uh, and we're looking at some actual spend that we need to do for that for that particular site. So I think, without further ado, I'll show you the. Uh... Uh, let me stop sharing. And stop sharing. Yeah, it's working. And Lee, please come back with the video. Uh, it would be so much better. Okay. See you. Uh, I on my side will switch it off. Yeah, since you're presenting. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let me know if you can see my screen. Um, yeah, it's working. Excellent. Okay. So, it's not that we didn't have any issues with uh, internet outages and synchronization issues. Uh, we've done a we've done a video, a Blue Peter special, as some of us will <laughs> may know it as. But I'll be talking over the points as we go through this. So the aim of this is to show you, you know, some of the functions, the features, and, and the benefits of using uh, this stack of software. So I'll, I'll kick it off. So the first thing I want to show you is uh, approval workflows. So these can be very complex or very simple, but it will depend on your own organization's uh, business rules. So here, for example, we're looking at this reception user in the purchase order creation chain, and it will click through in a moment. So within here, what we can do is keep it open or we can you know, place filters to control the uh, ordering behavior. So we've said that this individual can only order against department for resi engagement or, or for services, against a variety of uh, account codes that are uh, retrieved from zero. We then have some tax settings on here because this is UK student housing, so there's, there's no VAT implications on the operating cycle. And then we can have various branding themes for the purchase order that we would uh, send out to our supplier. Then we can look into the approval chain. So for this demo manager, we're saying, look, he would cover every uh, creation from the, uh, the demo reception user. We can remind people because people don't always uh, react and, and do the work so we can pester them. There are other flows that you can look at. So we've got here a bill creation flow. So we're pulling in records from zero under the demo accountant user. And then we've got our demo reception who should be initially reviewing that uh, bill and approving it. And then that passes on to the demo manager for further approval. But then, as I said, we've got down a little further and um, actually we're now into the order so let me just do a quick pause there so we now moved across into the order phase but back on the approvals there were five standard approval workflows that can be can be set up and it's very quick and easy to do so the benefits that you know it gives you defined you know repeatable rules that can be enforced uh, you know it's useful for your end users not to have to use uh, paperwork just come straight into the app and, and raise the order. So here we go. Let's look at how easy this is to do. So we're now in the order cycle. So they're pulling from an approved list of onboarded suppliers. We can put the date in, set our delivery date for, for the services, put a quote in from, from our supplier, pop some notes in for the approver if needed pop the description in for the uh, the goods, or we could have used items. So you can have catalog items if you so choose. Pop the value in, unit price. That pulls through the account codes as set on the workflow rules, the, the VAT condition, the rule there, and then just some cost center accounting codes. It's possible to add further lines, so you can have multi-line orders, no problem. We can add attachments. 
So in this example, we're going to add a, a quote that we've received from our supplier. Pick our relevant delivery address so they know where to conduct the, and provide the service. Mark it for someone's attention, always useful. Contact details for that individual. Any further specific delivery instructions. So this piece at the bottom, automatically email approved purchase order to supplier, is a great time saver. So that's part of the automation. It's a good tip. So we, you know, we do advise it gets gets used. So that individual submitted their purchase order through for approval. So we're now going to log in as the demo manager. That'll come through shortly. So they're just whizzing through. So the demo reception user is just checking through that the order looks okay, shows the expected details on this order. Okay, so we're now logged in as our manager who has this order now in their work queue. So they get notification via mobile app, by email, uh, with a link straight through to the, to the app. So this individual can review, check the uh, paperwork submitted by the supplier. Also then look at the budget. So here it's showing we've got £1,042 available budget for February against a order of £500. They can then just simply approve and that then drops out of their work queue. So we then come back in as our demo reception user. They can see the order has been approved. Another very useful feature here is we can then show an audit report so we can see and show people that the, the business rules have in fact been followed. So it's a, a nice little feature. The next thing that we would then do, because the order has been approved, that will automatically filter straight, sorry, post straight through into zero. Nobody has to do any work there. So this is giving the visibility of the, you know, active orders to your finance teams. So it's got all the relevant information. They can see that it's got the copy of the quote and the audit report as generated by Approval Max. So lots of feature rich information for your end users. And here's just an illustration of the PO going out to the supplier. So it's not styled, it can be styled to your company brand. That's not a problem, quick and easy to do. But that's just the instruction to the supplier to do the work. Right, so we're coming into HubDoc now. So I'll do a quick pause at that point. So within HubDoc, this is a, it's free. I mean, it's a great tool. It sits within Zero. So if you have Zero, you get HubDoc for free. Uh, it, it, you know, the time saving that you can get by using this product is, is fantastic. Uh, it takes away all the purchase invoice input burden away from your finance teams. You know, we're using machines to automate this uh, and it's high volume, but low value, but it needs to be done. So there are various ways of getting records into HubDoc. Uh, so we'll show you various methods. So you can connect through to certain established suppliers. So in this example, we're using Vodafone. Uh, Vodafone could kick out their sales invoice and that will automatically appear in your HubDoc. Every account comes with a unique email address, which can be mapped to your invoices at your company.com. So your suppliers would be given that email and simply send through their documents. Another method you could use to get this information in is to hit the, the browse button. So you can do bulk upload or single upload of, of files. So it's scanned that record very quickly. And we also have a mobile app you can use to upload. So just regarding the mobile app, uh, I would advise that you are careful with using that application because you don't want people at site just submitting expenses through HubDoc if they're already using, uh, you know, a mobile expenses application such as Expensify or, or Plio because that app will already be linked into Zero. So just be just be careful there. 
So moving on. So what we're seeing, seeing here is that the document has in fact been reviewed by HubDoc. No one's been involved in this process. On the right hand side, it's showing me what HubDoc has read from that uh, uploaded PDF. And then shortly we'll see the clever part, which is Zero doing the coding of this. So it's going to publish this as a purchase. It'll move it, give it a status of awaiting approval. It's got our correct contact, the supplier. And then we've actually coded up this uh, particular invoice. And again, I'll do a quick pause. Now, obviously HubDoc uses machine learning. So when you first get the invoice from your supplier, for the first time, you have to tell it how to post that record, uh, which takes all of 30 seconds to do. But then for subsequent records from that same supplier, it will learn how to code up that record for you. Uh, so in the longer term, you're not going to be needing, as I say, depend, you might have 20, 30 companies in your portfolio properties uh, with two or three purchase AP staff keying in invoices all day. Well, you, you, you're not going to need that. You know, this machine, this program will do that for you. So if we continue. So what we've set on here is just to do the configuration and then we have a manual intervention to publish that. And then we can see that record come immediately through into Xero. So in our awaiting approval queue, this is the invoice that was scanned by HubDoc. So it contains all the relevant information, all the correct coding, the correct VAT treatment, the dates, the references, a copy of the source file. So it's all there and nobody again has, has been involved in that process. Because we set the status to awaiting approval, that will also then be driven straight through to approval max. So again, here's that particular bill and that's with our demo reception user because we want them to review the, the bill and do the matching to the purchase order. So they can click match with PO, then pick the relevant purchase order for that uh, invoice. And then approve that step. So that's, they're not spending any money there, they're just doing the match of the item. There can be tolerance controls in there as well. Where if, you know, if the supplier has been cheeky and over, <laughs> overpriced the job. So we're now logged in as our demo manager. And again, they need to do the approval as well before it can be pushed back to zero with an awaiting pay status. So once it's at awaiting pay within zero, that could then be batched up as part of your uh, month end pay runs uh, and then pay those suppliers. So we've moved across the invoice into zero with this await, awaiting pay status. And because now it's been fully approved, that now hits the general ledger. So it forms part of our financial figures. So I'm just running a trial balance up to the end of February here. We're going to the relevant code, which is security guard costs. We show the transaction, which shows the invoice duly posted. And then within there, we can, bear with me a second, we can then just check that that looks okay. Uh, sorry, back into zero, bear with me. So within the, the next phase would be, we want to now look at creating a purchase order, another one. So we want to make this easy. Uh, now purchase orders can be created from scratch, but you can actually go back to source or earlier approved orders and copy. So if you're ordering from similar suppliers all the time, you can quickly spin up new orders, again, saving time for your end users. So all I'm doing here is same supplier, but for the following week. So that was, you know, creating that order via copy. It was very quick to do. It's now being approved. We log then in as our demo manager again to see that order in their work queue. They in turn can then approve that. So that takes care of that piece. So what we're doing now is we're assuming, let me pause. 
So we have, uh, in the scenario so far, we've posted two purchase orders, one both approved, one has been matched to invoice. Uh, we're now at month end, we want to create the accrual report. So we'll walk, walk through that process. So this is done within approval max. So there's a standard report called POs approved this month. So we can see it suggesting that there are two potentially for accrual, but one has a zero balance because it has been matched to a bill, but we've not informed uh, approval max that this is fully completed. So this is a task we can delegate to our site teams as they have the, the full visibility of the orders and the invoices. So they'll come in, just mark that as build. And that will then remove that from the accruals report. So we've only now got the single purchase order as expected. We can quickly create the accrual report, pop a narration in there just so we have uh, good information for zero when it automatically posts through. Set the date, pick our accruals nominal. So this is a rinse repeat process. Um, you know, we can have a fixed like a process note within an application such as Xavier to handle this. So people are prompted each month to ensure it does get done. It kicks out a CSV file with all the relevant information. And in the description there, you can see the exact purchase order with the value. Hop into zero, and the accountant just simply goes to accounting manual journals, which you'll see in a moment. Pick the file, import, complete the import, takes seconds to do. We can set the auto reversing journal. So for accruals, we tend to book them in the current period, reverse in the following period, as we'll have invoices to come through and match to that. Uh, later. So that's posted through. If we now look at our trial balance once again. So we're seeing that we have a cost of a thousand, which is going to be built up of the invoice, the 500 matched to the first order, and then the journal for the accrual. So that ensures our financials are correct at month end. So apart from really, um, yeah, Sorry, apart from amending the accruals report within uh, Approval Max, which really would be done by the site teams with some guidance from, from finance. The finance team, the only actual piece of work they've done is to post this accruals journal. So within Xero, there are a suite of standard reports. Uh, they're very comprehensive. And we have this example management report here which contains pre-approved, you know, pre-set pages containing relevant information. Uh, we can save this as a draft each month or once and then just rinse repeat again. So here's a pack that we produced for this session. So we'll quickly show you that report. So there's an executive summary showing various uh, items move through the cash uh, summary positions. And then the important one would be, certainly for site teams would be the p &L. So wait for that to come through. So we've got a monthly budget versus actual, a year to date budget versus actual. So we can see that there's control against the budget and that can be quickly reported on and variances uh, you know, surfaced. Within the pack, we can produce these other reports such as aged receivables, aged payables. Again, this information can be shared with your, with your site teams because typically, let me pause. We, we know from experience that site teams do get contacted by suppliers saying, you know, have you paid uh, my bill? Well, if we give them these reports, then they can quickly dive in and see that, yes, we're up to date with the, uh, the payments. So it means less contact with your head office finance team. So finally, what we can have are just uh, GL downloads, which can be attached to this report pack. 
So for every balance displayed, for example, in the PL, we can provide a full transaction listing. So this is a pack, it can be quickly, well, here we're showing it's downloaded to PDF, but it can be created once and then updated each month. So it's quick to produce. And we're just ensuring that when we close a month end in our books that we can quickly distribute a, a report showing that month end position, which would then be discussed obviously internally with their operations directors, uh, finance directors, etc. So Dream, sorry, Zero is very good at kicking out, you know, these tabular style reports. We'll show you something slightly different in, in Fathom. So just bear with me. So we'll just come into the end of this. So we're going to now hop into Fathom. So let me quickly pause here. So Fathom is a fantastic add-on to the stack. It gives you really feature-rich reporting. Uh, for end users with uh, the read-only access, they would have access to the analysis and the reporting tab. And from there, they can dive into their KPIs, look at profitability, cash flow, growth, trend analysis, goal seeking. Uh, the key element here is the financials. Uh, alongside with this core product at company level, if the portfolio is made up of several uh, companies, they can be brought into a benchmark group. So you can see very clearly how th those companies are performing against each other. Uh, so it's a, it's a fantastic tool. And as I said, the analysis it's just a web link. The guys can go to it anytime they choose. Uh, with reporting, that's done via, it can be again done in real time, but it tends to be pushed out via scheduler. But let's just look at what this does show us. So I'm looking at a profit and loss here at a very detailed level. It's showing me the year to January at this point, my academic year to January. Then we can change that to our current month. I can see my costs uh, year to date match what we have in zero. I'm looking at the full year budget here. I can change that to budget year to date to get a, a different view of the data. So it's reassuring for your site teams that they can see how they are performing. Then within reporting, we can give you very highly stylized reports which can contain lots of visuals, lots of graphs uh, alongside tabular data. So this information can be presented, you know, we write the report once and then it can be repeated, you know, as many times as needed. So we had a couple of graphs there for costs, revenue. This is showing P&L balance sheet, cash flow, and we've got some KPI data just spinning up there as well. Uh, and this can be reviewed any time by, by your staff. So in, you know, in summary, what we're showing you is that it's um, by using this stack, it's easy for the site teams to use the tools. Uh, Approval Max, you know, has a mobile app, so it's great for approvals. They can raise orders. Uh, they can hop onto tablets or PCs to get access to Fathom. Uh, and by having these nice, easy tools and not having to raise paperwork and phone calls and emails, it's all controlled. And ultimately, it gives them more time to look after their customers. Uh, you know, by using these tools as well, you're, you're doing a lot of automation. Uh, bear with me. So again, sorry, just restarted my video there. So by using the, these tools, you're, you're getting the benefits of automation. So when we're linking your PMS, your property management system, that would drive through all the rent uh, transactions and the, uh, the payments. But then also getting with the AP side by using HubDoc and Approval Max, there's a great deal of automation going on there. And then finally with Zero, it has open banking. So the bank rec is pulling in all that information. So it's all very useful. Um, so we find it's, it's a very, it's a good stack. Another thing that we've neglected to, to say, but I think it's important to mention, we're talking about the benefits to end users and, and finance, but it's all web-based software, so there are no complications with IT. We don't need to spin up servers with Azure data centers, which is an additional cost that sometimes people don't think about. You know, it's, it's not going to be required. So, 
you know, CloudFox's strengths are in working with lots of people within businesses. You know, we were there to help with the systems and processes, and then you guys can focus on, you know, the people, uh, your tenants and, and the buildings. So that, that concludes the, the session from me. So I'll hand you back to Maria. Thank you very much. I think it will be time. Uh, we will change the order and first talk about the offer, I guess, just to make sure that everybody can see that. So Eddie, let me invite you to talk about the offer then, and then we take care of the questions. So there are a couple of questions. So yeah, please stay tuned. Uh, now, Eddie, over to you. Yeah, so I think, um, thanks very much for that demo, Lee. Um, it's always slightly difficult to cram in all that functionality uh, and certainly different perspectives. But, you know, we haven't mentioned, you know, the actual cost of this app stack is so minimal compared to um, some of the other software that's out there. So it's at current retail price is 87 pounds. And I think, um, which is amazing value. Um, and we've only touched the surface of what you could deal with within Fathom, within approval maximum and zero. Uh, with, um, with, the, with the support and the setup that we, we're offering, we're not gonna give you just one month, two months, or, is three months at 50% off so that you can get to use the software, understand its functionality. Um, and then within that offer, we're gonna give you two hours consulting and set up with that. So it's almost risk-free for you to try this with your business. And if, you, if it's not any, any good after almost a hundred days, you just go, okay, that's, that, that's switched off. So there's a link there for the offer. Um, Schedule us in before the end of uh, end of this financial year, 31st of March, and we'll be happy to um, extend that offer to you. And uh, I think you would not be disappointed uh, when you start using this software and finding out how straightforward it is to use. Can I Thank just you very much. There? So that should be very, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was just going to say the 87 pound per month there, that's the headline price. That's before the 50% discount, just in case anyone was uh, wondering. Makes sense, sure. Um, thank you very much, Lee. Thank you very much, Eddie. So now uh, uh, let's walk through the questions. So the first one that we got is about QuickBox. And uh, so what happens if it's not zero, but this is QuickBox online. So I can very quickly uh, talk about, uh, answer that if it's from the approval max perspective. So same functionality there. So for QuickBooks Online specifically, so not uh, not the desktop version, but QuickBooks Online, so same functionality there. So for Fathom, I assume this is also true. So same for integration, right? Yeah, yeah, it's correct. It's exactly the same from our side. Right, so uh, Eddie, anything that you would want to comment here in case that the preferred cloud accounting platform is not yeah, zero? So yeah. HubDoc, um, I don't believe does QuickBooks um, since they've been purchased by zero. Um, but there will be other, other providers that do that OCR aspect of, of it for, for you to get into QuickBooks. Right, right. So for approval max, that would need to be receipt bank. So yeah. for, with zero, there is very, there is flexibility. So any, basically any data capture tool we work for QuickBooks Online. So that has to be received. Yeah. Bank. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so let me move on to other questions. So, um, it seems like useful software to manage the finance of properties, but you, uh, but have you considered any pro tech to help list properties faster and reduce marketing costs? So Eddie, to you. Thanks for your question, Jamie. I mean, we were concentrating mostly on the on the cost side of things, the purchase order and the approval process. Uh, we also do the, um, the the booking to balance sheet options for the customer uh, customer journey. So um, as Simon's also mentioned on there, that's the property management system typically, um, and the property management system will have either integrations into one of the portals to, to um, spread them out. So that's things like Lavanda, if you're doing short-term stays, or Spike Global um, for BTR, which is what uh, Moda and Novel Student use, or, or Starez as well. Starez is a, a great student software, but doesn't have the integration into those platforms. But they do a lot more things rather than just promoting your your um, your products to, to the market. We're also a HubSpot um, technology specialist. So we implement HubSpot for your CRM system. So we can then mix up your HubSpot, your Xero, um, so you can get your ad spend. Uh, and the great thing with the HubSpot and the ad spend sizing, you can do your ad spend through HubSpot and then you can track your bookings down to your actual customer point so that you can then actually do your customer acquisition costs um, from your ad, ad spend to your booking. 
Um, so it depends on what you're looking at in terms of the actual reducing marketing costs. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, we, we, we cover it all. Book into balance sheet. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, so moving on, and I guess that will be also to you, Eddie. So Heidi is asking how much access are on-site personnel able to look at and bypass the finance department? So I guess it's about controls and security. Yeah, so the, each one of the apps have uh, controls. So typically we don't give access into zero accounting to anybody other than the accounting team. Um, Fathom has its own security as well and you can get read only, only access and it can get quite granular. So they won't be able to drill down and see any of the source documentation. Um, and it's the same with approval max as well. There's, there's security um, permissions set within that as well. So you can have somebody who can raise a purchase order, but they can't approve it, or, or somebody can raise a purchase order just for a specific supplier or to a nominal code. Um, so you can really lock it um, down quite considerably. Um, on, um, unless Matt, you'd like to add any anything onto, onto that for the Fathom security? Again, I think you basically nailed it, but, um, but yeah, as, as Eddie says, um, it's kind of as, as much or as little as, as you want to share. Um, you can even spin up kind of uh, standalone reports for a certain sub, sub department or whatever the case may be, uh, if you want them to see certain elements of the uh, of the information, but not some of the more sensitive stuff. So it's, it's very much the powers in your hands, as it were. And then just to sort of pick up on Heidi's question there about the um, the alert screen, that, that was part of the report pack. So you can set within Fathom um, alerts and, and tolerances within those those alerts. So if you say our, our gross profit percentage needs to be this number, then those alerts will show in the, the narration at the end of the reports, as well as having a traffic light kind of uh, status as well. So it really flags to your eyes, you know, this is a problem with this KPI, so you can go in and look in, into it. Yeah, yeah that's, yep. Yeah add to that so obviously yeah the kpis can be set and measured at company level but the alerts dashboard is more within the benchmarking product where you're measuring multiple companies uh, but it's great it gives you a very clear report showing you uh, you know where the alert has been triggered and it's outside expected tolerances or where that alert's being measured but yes yeah fathom is very good for that yeah and, and it's not applicable just to zero it's a fathom feature yeah. so connect Fathom to your other uh, other accounting software and you'll still have those alerts as well once you've configured them. Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh, so the next one uh, about so individual prices, I think we can, there will be follow up so we can include that. So basically taking uh, the, the prices from the website, they're available on the on each uh, applications website. So do you work with partnerships abroad? That's, uh, that's to you, Eddie. Is that, is that to us um, um, or, 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 I mean, to, or to uh, you guys? Um, is, that, is that to us, Lloyd, or are you looking at um, partnerships within Approval Max, Fathom, and, and Zero? Because all, all, they operate, all the software offers have partnership um, set up. Um, so they provide the software, and then they look for uh, partners like ourselves to implement that software and then tune it towards that vertical or those certain customers that we, we operate with. Yeah. So I guess we'll just yeah we'll consider it's uh, it's 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 to you it's to you Eddie. So um, um, in the Q and A session, there's uh, let me actually quickly check. There's uh, in chat. Do you have implementation partnerships with South Africa? Estelle is asking. Yeah. Um. No, but my wife's South African. We've been trying to get to South Africa for the last two years. So uh, any any excuse that I can expense a flight to South Africa, I'm I'm definitely keen um, to do that. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll reach out uh, after the call and we'll just have a conversation with Stel and see um, see where where we can help. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so. Um... Yes, so about the slides, absolutely, we will be sharing those. So a quick question about uh, purchase orders, if, they're, if they can be reported in approval max. So Konstantin, um, if you're with us, if you could please talk about that. So yes, Konstantin, hello. head of product at approval max, yeah. Yes, hello everyone, this is Konstantin speaking. And to answer the question straight away, yes, that's possible to do. So there is no limitation in approval max in terms of uh which purchase orders you could be reporting on so if they are uh one month old two months old one year old that's all good so no no problem with that at all uh, i hope this helps 
Yes, thank you very much. I think we have taken up all the hour that we initially requested. So uh, if any, if there are any other questions, we'll be very happy to answer. So we will be following up the session with a recording and if there, and uh, um, for each of the, of the questions that, that we had here. So, uh, and also with the link to the offer. So let me thank, uh, um, our club folks today, our club folks team today. So thank you very much, Eddie. Thank you very much, Lee. Okay, so, man. and uh, thank you very much, Matt, for joining us. It's been a great experience. It's been very exciting, very, insight, uh, very uh, exciting and insightful. So happy to stay in touch. And uh, I hope you will be joining our future Tech Talk with Partner sessions. So see you there. Thanks everyone for attending. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. See ya. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Bye.